The Seven-Day Mental Diet by Emmett Fox. This simple-to-follow program, yet probably one of the most challenging programs that we can go on, can be one of the most transformative programs that we could ever do in our life to bring us into the spirit of harmony. In the Bible, it says, the kingdom of heaven is within you, and heaven means harmony. Harmony within is expressed as harmonious people, environment, circumstance, and condition in the external world. Inharmonious within is reflected accordingly as well. Thus, by changing our thoughts and the way we think, we impress in our subconscious mind that what is related to our thoughts. What is impressed in our subconscious mind is expressed outwards and materialized into form. Harmonious thoughts translate into harmonious impression on the subconscious mind, which translate into harmonious people, environment, circumstance, and information in the external world. Inharmonious does the same thing of its equivalent. The subconscious mind is responsible for creating most of our reality. And the subconscious mind is impressed via the five senses, the data received via the five senses, and the meaning given to that data, or the sixth sense, otherwise we called it the imagination. And in the sixth sense, we have the ability to choose consciously that what we want to impress in our subconscious mind. Those that have a great ability to work with the creative imagination are able to impress their subconscious mind of specificity of that what we want to create, and then have that expressed outwards even if five sensory based data meaning denies it. And if five sensory based data denies it, we have the power to change that meaning to that what enables it, that what enables and is harmonious with our vision, that what we want to create. This seven day diet helps us understand the power that we have to change the thoughts. It also helps us evaluate the different kind of thinking that we have every day and ask ourselves, is it harmonious and related to that what we desire to create, knowing that our thoughts impress themselves on our subconscious mind and express outwards to reflect accordingly. The seven-day mental diet also allows us to switch real-time any kind of dwelling on negative thoughts into thinking of harmonious thoughts, uplifting thoughts, that what is related to what we want to create. The most important of all factors in your life is the mental diet on which you live. And the most important of all factors in your life is the mental diet on which you live. We are a product primarily, especially in the earlier stages, by the people, environment, circumstance, and information that we consume via the five senses and the meaning given to this data. As we evolve in this journey, we rely more on our imagination and the sixth sense. And in our imagination, we can create our own meaning. Regardless, any information that's consumed and meaning given to it is impressed on the subconscious mind and expressed outwards and materialized into form to reveal what is within, harmoniousness or inharmoniousness. So we then have a choice to choose the kind of information that we are taking in. A lot of the information that we're taking in is information that is related to past information that has impressed in its subconscious mind to express outwards as a mirror and we consume that information. If we've been having inharmonious relationships with ourselves, others, people, environment, and circumstance in our past, then that information is impressed in the subconscious mind with the meaning and we have in front of us inharmonious relationships with people, environment, and circumstance to reveal that the inharmoniousness is within. When we go on a journey of consciously impressing the subconscious mind or changing the meaning to empowering meaning, then we find that the experiences in the external world changes to reflect the thoughts within. It is the food which you furnish to your mind that determines the whole character of your life. It is the thoughts you allow yourself to think, the subjects you allow your mind to dwell upon that make you and your surroundings what they are. In earlier stages of this journey, we are very reactive, and we do not believe that we have the power to change it via our thoughts. As we work with this personal development information, as we cleanse our subconscious mind, 
we start to see that by changing our thoughts, the external world changes. And then we develop an internal locus control. We become empowered. We go into a cause-based reality. There's fundamentally two ways of living reality. As a cause or the effect. The effect of the world or the cause of the world. Either or, it will be so. If we believe that we are effect of the world, then we'll be surrounded by information, people, environment, and circumstances that reveal it to be so. If we believe that we are the cause, then we'll be surrounded by people, environment, circumstances that reveal it to be so. The bottom line is the choice is within. And if we want to create what we desire, then we want to put ourselves in the cause. If harmoniousness is what we desire, then we want to instill harmoniousness within via the subconscious mind and have it expressed outwards. What is expressed outwards from the programming of our subconscious mind, which is part of the seven-day mental diet, will be experienced in the external world as harmoniousness. Thought. Thought is the real causative power or force in life, and there is no other. You cannot have one kind of mind and another kind of environment. This means you cannot change your environment while leaving your mind unchanged. Everywhere we go, there we are, and who we are is a collection of our thoughts. By changing our thoughts, everywhere we go, we reflect what is in our thoughts. We also choose to go in harmonious circumstances, environments that are related to our thoughts. We also find ourselves attracted to and gravitated to that what is related to our thoughts, knowingly or unknowingly. It still remains true that what is reflected in the external world is a net result of thoughts. While we may not have consciously chosen those thoughts, and those thoughts might have been based on past experiences that we have and meaning given to us from various circumstances, it still remains true that the thoughts are within and they express outwards. This then is the key to life. If you change your mind, your conditions must change also. Your body must change. Your daily work or other activities must change. Your home must change. Your whole life must change. For whatever you be habitually happy and cheerful or low-spirited and fearful depends entirely on the quality of the mental food upon which you diet yourself. Please be very clear about this. If you change your mind, your conditions must change too. Many of us have been on this journey of personal development for quite a bit of time. All we have to do is reflect back on new information that we've taken in that was empowering and that we've believed to be true that has impressed the subconscious mind and observe the changes in our external world as a result of that information. This was a net result of changing our mind. When we changed our mind, the external world changes. Through the seven-day mental diet, we're amplifying the ability to change the mind. We're bending reality into a different direction, more into the cause-based direction because we are aligning with harmonious thoughts. Well, what about moods? You must train yourself to choose the subject of your thinking at any given time and also to choose the emotional tone or what we call the mood that colors it. Yes, you can choose your moods. Indeed, if you could choose, if you could not, you would have no real control over your life at all. We must first believe it's possible to choose our thoughts and our emotions. It is possible. In the Bible it said, if thou canst believe all things are possible to him that believeth. And that stated, we have the power to choose our thought and our moods. One of the ideas that cripples us is the idea that we do not have control of our emotions. This is simply not true. We might be under such a grip of our emotions that we might not believe that we have control of our emotions. But as we begin to cleanse ourselves of disempowering programming, we start to realize that we do in fact have control of our emotions. We change our thoughts on how we respond to a circumstance and then we start to feel better about it. And when that same circumstance shows up, we respond in a positive mood, thus changing the mood with the thought. 
In business, selling may require you to deal with rejection. When you experience rejection, do you feel empowered or do you feel disempowered? Those that have conditioned their mind to feel empowerment through rejection know exactly what it is I'm talking about by understanding the power of transmutation. Transmutation is the act of turning one meaning into another emotionally. We have the ability to take one emotion that is a response from a certain stimulus from the external world and change it into another emotion. Rejection can make us feel empowered, excited, put us in a state of what we can do, or it can make us feel low self-esteem and low self-worth and lack of worthiness. Criticism can empower us, uplift us, or criticism can disempower us. The feeling, the mood that we experience through criticism reveals to us of the meaning we give to the external world data that is received via the five senses in which we interpret as criticism. The meaning we give to it changes the mood, and so it is possible then to change the mood by changing the thought. Moods habitually entertained produce the characteristic disposition of the person concerned, and it is his disposition that finally makes or mars a person's happiness. This is what we do during the seven days. First, make up your mind to devote one week solely to the task of building a new habit of thought, and during that week, let everything in life be unimportant as compared with that. Now, this is a process, and we have to take this consciously and seriously. For one week, we make this a priority. One week, we are going to devote to reconditioning the mind and bending it over to positive, bending it over to the spirit of harmony, bending it over to cause-based thinking rather than effect-based thinking, being the cause of reality rather than being reactive to reality, to consciously choose what kind of meaning we give to data via the five senses versus allowing others to determine what kind of meaning we assign or the external world, what kind of meaning to assign to that data that's received with our five senses. If you will do so, then that week will be the most significant week in your whole life. It will literally be the turning point for you. If you will do so, it is safe to say that your whole life will change for the better. In fact, nothing can possibly remain the same. In short, if you want to make your life happy and worthwhile, which is what God wishes you to make it, you must begin immediately to train yourself in the habit of thought selection and thought control. It's said in the Bible, the kingdom of heaven is within you. And heaven means harmony. Harmonious within is a result of harmonious thoughts, which is expressed outwards as harmony in the external world. This may be exceedingly difficult in the first few days. Perhaps you've been overwhelmed by negative thinking, overwhelmed by disempowering thoughts, overwhelmed by inharmonious. The default state is harmony, and the power is within you to bring it into a state of harmony. But if you persevere, you will find that it will become rapidly easier. And it is actually the most interesting experiment that you could possibly make. For seven days, you must not allow yourself to dwell for a single moment on any kind of negative thought. So the key here is dwelling. It is not to say that negative thoughts won't put up in your mind, show up unknowingly. It is how you respond to those negative thoughts. It is to release them and not dwell upon them and switch your mind over to positive thought. One of the things that I find really helps me on this journey, because I've done this a number of times, including for 30 days with Strangest Secret by Earl Nightingale, is by writing my definite chief aim on my card and keeping it with me at all times. When I find myself about 
to start dwelling on a negative thought, I pull out my card and read it, and immediately, right then and there, I feel empowered. I think about my goal, and the thought goes away. You must watch yourself for a whole week as a cat watches a mouse, and you must not, under any pretense, allow your mind to dwell on any thought that is not positive, constructive, optimistic, or kind. This discipline required may be so high that you might not maintain it consciously for much more than a week, but I do not ask you to do so. A week will be enough because by that time, the habit of positive thinking will begin to be established, or, depending on where you're right now, further established. Some extraordinary changes for the better will have come into your life, encouraging you enormously, and then the future will take care of itself because you will be on a trajectory. Remember that what we think impresses on the subconscious mind and expresses accordingly. If we dedicate a week of thinking positively, then that impresses the subconscious mind and expresses outwards as positive experiences with people, environment, circumstance, and information. And that information then goes and impresses the subconscious mind further and keeps going over and over again to express outward accordingly. Impression from the external world to the subconscious mind and expression by the subconscious mind. Do not start it lightly. Think about it for a day or two before you begin. Then start in, and the grace of God go with you. You may start it at any day of the week and at any time in the day first thing in the morning or after breakfast or after lunch. It doesn't matter. But once you do start, you must go right through for seven days. This is essential. The whole idea is to have seven days of unbroken mental discipline in order to get the mind definitely bent in a new direction once and for all. Okay, very important. The whole idea is to have seven days of unbroken mental discipline. Not to say that you won't have negative thoughts, but to apply mental discipline and switch over to positive thoughts in order to get the mind definitely bent in a new direction once and for all. Now, this may appear challenging, and few people in their life will ever go through a process like this, but you are being exposed to it. And because you are being exposed to it, you have a choice. Will you put it to the test and apply and see what happens? If you put this to the test and you are successful, circumstance, environment, and people will change and will continue to do so. I know I speak from experience on this, and I've done this many times. And we got to do it once in a while as maintenance because we're surrounded and bombarded by information everywhere we go, especially in this world where we're hyper-connected via the Internet. And we have to make sure we are guarding the subconscious mind. Consider this almost like a seven-day cleanse a mental cleanse. By applying this, we recalibrate the mind back to the cause. Internal locus of control versus external locus of control. We take the power back when we might have been unknowingly assuming information to be as fact that is disempowering slowly over the course of time, bringing us into a state of inharmony. If you make a false start, or even if you go on well for two or three days and then for any reason fall off the diet, the thing to do is to drop the scheme altogether for several days and then start again. There must be no jumping on and off as it were. First of all, what do I mean by negative thinking? Well, a negative thought is any thought of failure, disappointment, or trouble, any thought of criticism, spite, jealousy, condemnment of others, or self-condemnment, any thought of sickness or accident, or in short, any kind of limitation or pessimistic thinking, limited thinking, disempowering thinking, fear-based thinking. Second, you must be quite clear that what this scheme calls for is that you shall not entertain or dwell upon negative things. Note this very carefully. It is not the thoughts that come to you that matter, but only such of them as you choose to entertain and dwell upon. It does not matter what thoughts may come to you, provided that you do not entertain them. That's what matters. 
It is the entertaining or dwelling upon them that matters. That's how you do the seven-day challenge, seven-day mental diet, is you stay with a higher degree of presence and awareness and observant of the various thoughts that show up. And if they're negative, you release them and don't dwell upon them. One of the strategies that you can use is affirmations. When a negative thought shows up, pull up a list of your affirmations and read them that are positive. Another strategy is to show gratitude towards that what you appreciate in your life. Another strategy is to look at your definite chief aim and realize that what you are doing in this mental diet is contributing towards your definite chief aim because harmoniousness within is going to bring forth your definite chief aim. That's why I write my definite chief aim, chief aim down on a card. Negative thoughts may come to you all day long. Some of them will just drift into your mind of their own accord seemingly, and these come to you out of the race mind. Other negative thoughts will be given to you by other people, either in conversation or by their conduct. Or you will hear disagreeable news, perhaps a letter or telephone, or you will see crimes and disasters announced in the newspaper headlines. These things, however, do not matter as long as you do not entertain them. When the negative thought floats into your mind, immediately turn it out and think of something else. What of the ordinary troubles that you will have to meet in the office or at home? The answer is that such things, negative experience or conditions, will not affect your diet provided that you do not accept them by fearing them, by believing them, or by giving them any power at all. Remember, what we're doing here is exercising. We're developing the ability to choose our thoughts, control our thoughts, and to control our moods, to understand that we can change the meaning within when we receive data via the five senses and adjust it real time. This is one of the most powerful skills that you can learn in life, and it can be one of the most powerful skills that contribute to creating a harmonious life for you because the kingdom of heaven is within you, and heaven means harmony. And what we're doing is we're adjusting information that is given to us via our five senses to harmonious thinking and harmonious meaning real time so that that harmoniousness can be impressed on the subconscious mind and expressed outwards. And the harmoniousness expressed outwards will further impress your subconscious mind because we are impressed by the information we are taking in via our five senses. And if there's harmonious information in the external world in our five senses and we're giving the meaning of harmoniousness as we're consuming it, then it's impressing the subconscious mind and further creating it in reality. In closing, I want to tell you that people often find that the stating or the starting of this diet seems to stir up all sorts of difficulties. It seems as though everything begins to go wrong at once. This is really a good sign. It means that things are starting to move. Suppose your whole world seems to rock on its foundations. Hold on steadily, let it rock, and when the rocking is over, the pitcher will have resembled itself into something much nearer to your heart's desire, which is harmoniousness, which is that what you want to create. A closing word of caution. Do not tell anyone else that you are on the diet or that you intend to go on it. Keep this tremendous project strictly to yourself. Remember that your soul should be the secret place of the Most High. When you have come through the seven days successfully and secured your demonstration, allow a reasonable time to elapse to establish the new mentality and then tell the story to anyone else who you think is likely to be helped by it. And finally, remember that nothing said or done by anyone else can possibly throw you off your diet. Only your own reaction to the other person's conduct can do that. If you want to copy this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.